So the next concept is to derive the value of HC. Um, this HC that appears right here, um, it's, it's easier to deal with this in electron volts nanometers, and so we're going to do that conversion here as part of a concept. HC, well, what's H? It's Planck's constant. You already know it. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. C, you know that. It's uh, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. But I want to convert this into EV nanometers. So I want to convert the joules into EV, and I want to convert the meters into nanometers. The seconds actually cancel. So all I have to do now is to convert joules into EV and meters into nanometers. No big deal. We know that 1 EV is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that'll cancel the joules and convert them to EV. And we also know that 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to the minus 9 meters. So that's this conversion factor, which cancels out the meters and gives us something in units of EV nanometers. Plug the numbers in, no big deal, uh, and it's 1240. Kind of a nice round number that's easy to, easy to commit to memory. But you can derive it because you already know Planck's constant and you know the speed of light. So let's do an example uh, for calculating a transition. And in particular, let's do a, a transition from n equals 3 to n equals 2. Remember, we have to start from a higher energy level. And the higher the value of n, the higher the energy level is. Remember that n equals 1 was minus 13.6, then n equals 2 is minus uh, 3.4, 4.3, whatever it was. Um, we get higher and higher, given higher and higher values, higher and higher energies for higher and higher values of n. And so I'm going to start off my initial <coughs> energy level is 3. And my final energy level is 2. Well, here's the equation that we just uh, went through and derived. The final is going to be 2, so that'll be 1 over 2 quantity squared. The initial is going to be 3, and so it'll be 1 over 3 squared. HC, we just worked out, is 1240 EV nanometers. And the, the wavelength we're looking for is the transition from level 3 to level 2. That's what this means. Lambda in going from 3 to 2. This first level will always be higher than the second level. Well, uh, no problem. Plug in all the numbers. You got a number on this side. The electron volts are going to cancel on both sides of the equation. And just do the math and solve for lambda 3 to 2. This is 656 nanometers. What color is that light? Let's say, hang on, visible light. Uh, red is 700, violet's around 400. So this might be red. And I would say, yeah, it is red. In fact, it's the hydrogen alpha line. <coughs> the hydrogen alpha line results from an electronic transition from level 3 to level 2. That is that red line that we saw in the, in the demo and that I replicated in the slide, and I'll show it to you again one more time. The, the Bohr's theory of the energy of these uh, different levels and the transitions between them, as far as we know, exactly predicts this wavelength for hydrogen alpha light. And hydrogen alpha light is, is the reason why the Orion Nebula, which is in the sword of the great hunter constellation Orion, why it has a reddish cast to it, because there's a lot of that uh, hydrogen in that nebula with electrons jumping from the third to the second level. Um, and you say, well, what about the beta and the alpha, or beta and the gamma? And the answer is that the beta line is a transition from 4 to 2. So let's look at these. Here are the energy levels again. n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, etc. And this is increasing energy again. 
So this is essentially the same diagram as we showed before with the different energy levels at higher and higher steps. But now we're asking about transitions between, between energy levels. The simplest one you might have thought of would have been a transition from 2 down to 1. That's this transition right here. So it turns out that one, that it's, it, this is called the Lyman series, where the final energy level is n equals 1. So all of these lines that come out in the line, uh, Lyman series end up in n equals 1. Turns out all of these are ultraviolet wavelengths. The Balmer series give, gives three, and in some cases people think they can see the fourth line, I've never been able to see it, but at least three visible lines. So these are visible. And the three that we have actually demonstrated for you are the three to two, that's the hydrogen alpha, four to two, all of the Balmer lines end up with n equals two the, as the final energy level, and then five to two for the gamma line. And these are the wavelengths. So this concept is to identify the three transitions. So that's the main issue in this concept, is to identify this 3 to 2 transition with the hydrogen alpha red line, the 4 to 2 transition with the beta, and the 5 to 2 transition for the gamma. And then the second part of it is to be able to calculate their wavelengths. Well, in this example that we just went through, uh, we in fact calculated the, the wavelength of that hydrogen alpha line. So now we know that it's a hydrogen alpha line. And you do the similar thing for the beta and the gamma lines. The only thing that would be different in calculating them is for the beta line, instead of putting the initial equal to 3, we're going to put it equal to 4. And that's the only thing that changes. And then this becomes, instead of a 3, it becomes a 4. So this is uh, another way of viewing these different uh, series. Here in this uh, diagram, it's, um, it shows the actual wavelengths of the lowest and highest wavelengths in each of these series. In the Lyman series, where the final state is n equals 1, uh, that 2 to 1 transition, this one right here is a 2 to 1, gives a wavelength of 122 nanometers. How do you know that's ultraviolet? Well, remember back to um, the visible spectrum is between 700 nanometers roughly and 400 nanometers roughly. Well, the 400 nanometer side is the violet side. So anything shorter than 400 nanometers is going to be ultraviolet. Anything uh, greater than 700 nanometers is going to be infrared. So we're shorter than 400 nanometers, so this has to be ultraviolet. All these lines are ultraviolet. And one thing you'll notice about it, this is uh, 2 to 1. This line here is 3 to 1. This next one's 4 to 1, 5 to 1, 6 to 1, 7 to 1. And these, are, these lines are actually getting closer and closer together so that at this point, roughly about here, this is infinity to 1. And um, the same thing happens in the Balmer series, which uh, has a three, maybe four visible lines, with the hydrogen alpha being marked here, 656 nanometers. Hydrogen beta was 400 and something. Uh, hydrogen gamma was 434, I think it was. Um, in fact, just, just making a point here, yeah, it's 486. You don't need to memorize these numbers. Just know how to calculate them. Uh, what's important in this concept is knowing that this 5-2 transition is the gamma line. Uh, but 434 is, is down close uh, to the violet end of the spectrum, but it still, to my eyes, looks blue. But this one is uh, kind of between blue and green. It's 486. Uh, 500 and, and above is, is a greenish color. So this is starting to look blue-green, etc. Yeah, so there's the Balmer series, and then this is the Passion series uh, with wavelengths. So there's three visible in the Balmer series. 
And in the Passion series, we've got wavelengths of 820 nanometers. Well, what's that? Well, the red end of the visible line is, uh, the red end of the visible spectrum is about 700 nanometers. Anything beyond that, anything bigger than that is going to be infrared, which this is. So this is going to be infrared radiation. So the ones that are interesting to, to we humans are these, these bomber lines. So this, once again, is, that, uh, is a, a screenshot from the video that we, the, the demo video that we showed earlier, showing the alpha red line, beta aqua line, and gamma blue lines. You'll see these very same lines in the lab where you talk about diffraction and um, a diffraction gratings, which allow you to get a spectrum. Now, back to the Bohr model. Um, these Bohr energy levels that are predicted by the minus 13.6 over n squared, those energy levels and the transition energy uh, wavelengths, they match up very, very nicely with experiments. And these lines are as, as indicative as a fingerprint and can be used to, to determine the, the motion of a star using the Doppler effect. The, um, but the Bohr, but modern quantum mechanics reinterpret the energy levels as probability clouds. So it's not really that, although the, the way Bohr thought about the atom was that it's a little electrons orbiting around the nucleus like the Earth orbits around the sun. That's not quite a correct picture. Um, it's more correct to think about that electron being in a cloud, and that cloud um, it gives a certain probability of the electron being at any, different, any point at any given time. And so it has a higher likelihood of being closer versus farther, that sort of thing. Um, and once you reinterpret the quantum mechanics that way, then you start to, to get a deeper and deeper understanding of it.